Welcome to the La Casa de Cristo sermon cast. This sermon is titled, Snapped Threads, by Pastor Jeff Ruby, dated December 3rd, 2023. Almighty God, may the words in my mouth and the meditations and prayers in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A parable is, by definition, a short story or an illustration that points us to a deeper spiritual or moral truth. That's what a parable is, a short story or an illustration that points us to a deeper spiritual or moral truth. I'm excited to be teaching on the parables at the Thursday morning pastor study in January, but the parable that I want to start off with today is not a parable of our Lord or a parable that you'll find in the Bible. It comes from our Danish brothers and sisters, and it's called the parable of the snapped thread. It seems that there was a spider who grew quite prosperous. He had woven a web in the corner of a farmer's barn, and there he caught insects and flies and ate a lot and enjoyed his life. And one day he was surveying his empire, and he noticed there was a loose thread of the web that was hanging at the bottom of the web itself. And he thought, how useless this thread is. I'm going to get rid of it. So he pulled on it, and nothing really happened. And then he tugged on it again, and nothing happened. And finally, he gave it a hard yank, and to his horror, he discovered that it was the thread that everything had started with. It was the thread that he had begun the web with. It was the thing that connected it all together, and his empire came crashing down upon him. Our Danish brothers and sisters use this parable to illustrate our relationship to Jesus Christ through God our Father, that we are connected by this special thread, and that so often, through the things we do and the things we fail to do, sins of commission, sins of omission, we too snap the thread with our Creator. That's really what Isaiah was talking about in today's lesson and why it's so important for us on this first Sunday of Advent to understand this in our life. In this lesson that Karen just read for us, we see clearly these words of Isaiah, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Isaiah was addressing the people of Israel. He was foreshadowing that Sennacherib, the king of Assyria would come and lay siege to Jerusalem and take captive King Hezekiah. He was trying to warn them that they were just going through the religious motions. Oh, they were showing up for worship once a week or twice a week, but really they didn't have any idea of how God should be a part of their lives every day. And so Isaiah warns them, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You see, this lesson applies to you and to me today. And our first tendency is we want to point fingers and say, oh, well, really, he's talking about the non-believers. He's talking about people who don't believe in God at all. Or he's talking about people of other religions or other faiths. But really, when we understand what Isaiah was saying, he was addressing it to the religious people. He was addressing it to the people of faith. And we need to take heed and Pay attention to this on this first Sunday of Advent because three weeks from today it will be Christmas Eve. And the next three weeks will bring all sorts of things that will be going on in your life and in my life and all sorts of responsibilities and things that will happen. And we all know what happens this time of year. People get stressed out. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of lists to be done. The need for counseling increases for pastors and for therapists. And all of these things combine to make our society a very anxious place. So for the people who name the name of Jesus Christ, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from Isaiah today? Why is this so important? You know, as we understand this, uh, it's maybe helpful to look at the words of a young child who last year at a Lutheran church in the Midwest came out of the children's ministry during Advent. And she was asked, well, what did you learn in the children's ministry? And she said, oh, it was the same old stuff. Shepherds and sheep, sheep and shepherds, shepherds and sheep. And you know, there was some truth there because this time of year we always talk about shepherds and sheep and the great shepherd who is Jesus Christ. But what does that really have to do with us? What does it have to do with us in terms of understanding and where do we place our priorities? 
You see, there's three things that I want to share that may be helpful to us today in understanding what the next three weeks will bring. If we place our emphasis where Isaiah says we should place it, then I think we're going to have a meaningful advent. And if we don't, then we run the risk of not listening to the Good Shepherd, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is first, and it sounds so simple. But when we place God first at the center of our lives, then we can have that peace and our anxiety can be lessened. You know, anxiety in our lives is like the check engine light on your automobile, on your car. If your check engine light goes off, it means one of a couple things. One, you have a routine problem. Maybe it's a routine maintenance reminder. Or maybe there's something more serious going on with your vehicle. But whatever it may be, whatever that may be in that moment, whatever that may be, you got to get your car looked at. You need to get it checked out. And the same is true in our life. When we find our anxiety rising, there is a reason for that, for people of faith. And that reason is that we have put people or positions or privilege or power in the place of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again, that when we put people or places or positions or power in the place of Jesus, then we're going to have a problem. So when we place God first, we can see that. And you know, here's the thing. As long as the sheep kept the shepherd in sight, as long as they kept the shepherd in their sight, they didn't run into any problem. But it was only when they went out of sight of the shepherd that they ran into problems. And the same is true with you and me. So in these days forthcoming, put God first. And then second, understand this. Are we truly seeking God's kingdom and righteousness in what we do here on earth? Are we truly seeking God's kingdom and righteousness in all that we do here on earth? You see, here's, I think, the reality. When it comes to our responsibilities in life, when it comes to our situations, when it comes to our resolutions, much of our anxiety can be placed squarely at our own doorstep because we march into situations that we have no business being in. And we make demands and we make expectations of others. And then we run into problems. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with good expectations. You have to have good expectations in anything in life, business or sports or volunteer work, whatever it may be. But the question is this, are the expectations we have our expectations or are they expectations surrounding God's kingdom and God's righteousness? Because nine times out of ten, we march into situations with our own expectations and then we have anxiety or we're disappointed when our expectations are not met. A number of months ago, a good friend of mine shared this phrase with me and I've been pondering it for the past six months or so. And the words are, expectations are premeditated resentments. Expectations are premeditated resentments. In other words, when we make it all about us, when we make it all about our expectations in life, then if those expectations are not fulfilled, we resent the person or the situation. Rather, the better question to ask is, is this of God? Is this of the Spirit? Is this what I'm doing to honor the other person? And particularly during the holiday season, we need to know and understand expectations sometimes get out of control and we need to pause and ask that once again. These people honor me with their lips, Isaiah said, but their hearts are far from me. And what Isaiah said in this text, what he's reminding us is the Lord is the Lord of our lives, not just on the weekends, not just at Saturday evening service or Sunday morning services, but each and every day of our lives he comes. And then third, we're going to run into problems if we're relying only on our own power and adequacy and not upon God's adequacy in our lives. We're going to run into problems if we rely only upon our own strength. I hate to break this to you, but God never intended us to be totally independent and self-sufficient. 
Now, it's good to be self-sufficient in many areas, maybe in our finances or maybe in the ways we interact with other people or whatever the case may be, but we must depend upon God in our life. And the anxiety level always rises in life when we're looking to our own adequacy and then maybe we either feel inadequate in a certain situation and not up to the task or we believe someone else is inadequate in their response to us. And so the gift of these days of Advent is, is that we can come with the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is what Isaiah was trying to share with the individuals that he was speaking to in the nation of Israel. He was trying to get them to see this wasn't about them. This wasn't about them. This wasn't about them. It was about God. And the same is still true for you and for me. You know, The shepherds only get into trouble. The shepherds only get into trouble when they don't take care of their sheep. And the sheep only get into trouble when they exert their own will against the shepherd. And so when we understand that, we don't have to snap the thread. We don't have to snap the thread that connects us to our creator. We only have to live in his grace, his love, and his light. I usually uh, prepare my messages in my office, but many times I find that's almost impossible with the phone ringing or other things that must be done. So sometimes I'll go to a quiet place on campus and begin my thoughts for the week's message. And this week I was out in the memorial garden earlier in the week. It was morning, it was cold, it was quiet. But I noticed something as I was jotting down a few notes. I I noticed that I was cold, in fact, even with a jacket on, almost shivering. But if I only moved a few feet over, there was the sun warming the fountain in the garden. There was the sun and the sunlight warming that. And all I had to do was move into the light. I didn't create the light. I didn't manufacture it. I didn't have anything to do with it. All I had to do was move toward the light. And the same is true in these days of Advent for you and me. If you're finding yourself the next three weeks with your spiritual check engine light turning red, then maybe it's wise for you to ponder and ask this. Are you placing God first in your life? Are you seeking his kingdom and his righteousness in all that you do? And are you relying upon your own strength or are you relying upon God's? It was Benjamin Franklin who wrote these words when he was meeting with the founding fathers and mothers of our country and writing the Declaration of Independence. They were talking about the need for the 13 colonies to be unified against the tyranny of Great Britain. And Benjamin Franklin said this, if we do not hang together, then we will surely hang separately. And what he meant by that was, if the colonies were not united, they would be in disarray. And our calling during this season of Advent is to share that unity with our great shepherd, Jesus Christ. It is the thread that binds us all together. It is the thread that comes from above. Let us not cut that thread by our own being and doing. Let us not march into situations of our own making only to wonder why it goes awry. Let us rely upon his grace for the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Amen.